Hi all and welcome to this video financial modeling blog tutorial. Today we're going to look at sculpting using a target debt service coverage ratio. If you haven't already done so you should stop the tape and read the blog CFADS and debt service coverage ratio sculpting. Okay, in the blog we look at three examples. The first one is a credit foncier repayment profile. The second one is a sculpted repayment profile with a target debt service coverage ratio of 1.3. And the third and final one is a, a sculpted debt repayment with a target debt service coverage ratio of 1.1. So the first question asks, find the maximum amount of debt using a credit foncier repayment profile for company A if it has the following cash flows. Assume interest of 6% and the debt is fully repaid by the end of the five years. So let's just put end of the five years, okay? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a corkscrew account, okay? So we're gonna put in a debt account, we're gonna have an opening balance, a closing balance, we're not going to have any additions here. We're simply going to put the additions in the closing balance for the start period. And we're going to have amortization in there as well. Now I'll be going quite quickly through this tutorial and the reason being is that YouTube videos are only 15 minutes. So with the corkscrew account, all we're going to do is the opening balance of the current period equals the closing balance of the previous period and the closing balance equals the sum of the above, okay? And we're just gonna copy those across and we're gonna put a number in here, okay? And that number is going to be five at the moment. That's gonna be our plug number. Now we're gonna put in the interest and amortization. And this one's gonna be credit foncier Okay, so the interest is simply going to be our opening balance, so equals our opening balance multiplied by 6%. Now normally I wouldn't hard code this 6%, but we are in this case going to do that. And all we have to do is copy that one across. So shift across, 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 and control R to copy that across. Okay, so that's our interest. The next thing we're gonna do is find our amortization, okay? So our amortization, if we're using a credit foncier repayment profile, remember, look back at the blog, but we talk about a credit foncier repayment profile being very similar to a home mortgage. So it's constant repayments split between interest and principal over a period of time or the tenor of the loan. Okay, so we're gonna add in a debt service here. And I'm just going to do a PPMT formula. Now, what we need for the PPMT formula is we're going to need one more thing. We're going to need periods remaining. Okay. And so the first one, we're just going to start off and I am simply going to, I'm simply going to hard code this one. So... I know that there's five periods remaining from here. Now we could code it in properly, but we're not going to do that. I just want you to understand the principles of the repayment profiles. And all we're going to do is that minus one all the way down here. And that's it. So it goes all the way down to one. So a amortization or to find the amortization in a credit foncier repayment profile, all we're going to do is equals payment or PPMT rather. So it says returns the payment on the principal for a given investment based on periodic constant payments and a constant interest rate, okay? So bracket, the rate is gonna be 6% per annum. The per is going to be one. Well, let's, let's look at it anyway, let's look at it. So the per is, it's going to be one, the N per, no, the per is going to be this one, 
the n per is going to be 1, okay, 1, and the present value is going to be the starting balance. And that's all we need to put in, okay? Okay. Okay, so I got the n per and the per mixed around. So the per is the 1 and the n per is the periods remaining. Okay, I'm just going to copy that one across. I'm going to use the same formatting. And copy that one across. I don't want that many decimal places. So let's just go down to two decimal places. And let's add up the debt service. So make sure that this is, is working right. Let's change that to a negative and let's see if this is working right. So if it's working right we should get a constant across here and of course we don't and the reason being is that we need to link this back up, okay? And there we have a constant repayment profile. Okay, so what is the maximum debt? Let's put in a excess cash tool. So excess cash after debt service. Yeah, I'm gonna color this one in gray and bold that and that's all good. So now we're gonna go equals sum so the sum of our CFAD, so cash flow available for debt service, comma, and the debt service is going to be our excess cash that we have available. Now we want to, what we want to do with this one is we want to drive our excess cash down to zero for at least one period. And that will be basically the maximum amount of debt that we could possibly get um, in most instances you wouldn't be able to obtain that amount of debt, but that would be the most amount of debt we could get in the structure. So it's probably going to occur in the first period. Let's just fiddle around with it. So we're going to do it by trial and error. So if we increase it to 10, then obviously the excess cash decreases. Now we're going to increase it to, let's say, 100. Okay, so the excess cash is now... 2.26. What we can do is we can go Alt and then we can go to, I think it's formulas in 2010. No, it might be data. It's so Alt, A for data, W for what if analysis, G for goal seek, and we can set that value to zero by changing this closing balance here. Yeah? Okay, and okay. So we've just got rid of the excess cash in at least one period. And remember, the repayment profile is flat, and if our CFADS is increasing, the maximum debt we can get is to make our excess cash available for debt service equal to zero for at least one period. Okay, so the next one says, it's a similar question, but it says use a target debt service coverage ratio of 1.3. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a debt account again. I'm going to have an opening balance, a closing balance, and a or amortization. Now, some people like to call that principle as well. That's just a side note. And I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. So equals and the previous period, alt equals, and then copy that across, okay? And now I'm going to work out the amortization. So I know the CFADs, so we can go, the CFADs is equal to this line here. And we can put in the debts, let's put in the target debt service coverage ratio, and that's 1.30. Copy that one across. I'm just going to 
adjust it so that it's an extra decimal place and then we can get the target uh, debt service okay and the way we do that is we go equals CFADS divided by the target debt service coverage ratio and that will give us our target debt service okay now we're going to put in a value in this time equals zero again let's just put in a plug figure of 10 or something now we're going to find the interest so the interest so this will be a deduction if we're trying to find the target amortization so target amortization okay and all we're going to do is we're going to go equals negative and the opening balance times 6%, we've assumed the same interest rate, and just copy that one across. So now our target amortization is simply going to be the target debt service, or the target debt service, less the interest. So let's sum the above. So, okay, equals the above. So I've just pushed Alt equals and selected those, and then Let's copy that across. Okay, so now we're going to go equals and it's going to be negative there to give our amortization. Okay, so here what happens, we need to make sure that all these numbers are positive and the final number is set to zero. Okay, and how do we do that? We change our, we change this number. So we change our plug number. So let's start playing around with that. Let's go up to 100 because I know that it's going to be more than 100 because the credit fonts here repayment profile was more than 100. Let's go to 150. We're getting pretty close now. And let's just make sure all those numbers. Let's go 175. Okay, let's goal seek now. So let's go Alt and A for data, W for what if analysis and G for goal seek and then let's go set that value to zero by changing that value there okay and let's go okay and then let's just do an excess cash here cash and what did we call it before So excess cash after debt service. So we go equals and we've got our CFADs up here and then plus our interest minus our target amortization. And we could make that a bit cleaner, but that's fine. And what you'll see now is I'll just gray and I'll sum this up. But because we've got more debt in the structure, we've got less excess cash flow. So that one was 69. The previous one was, so alt equals that. And that was 169. So we've got less in the second scenario. Okay, now we're going to let you do the final one. You can find all the answers on the next answer page. But what you should see with a target debt service coverage ratio of 1.1 is your excess cash goes down even lower and you should get out a even higher debt amount that you can put into company A.